Welcome to the Miami FC Broadcast Network. My name is Carter Krishner. I'm joined today by Coach Paul Daglish. We are going to be talking about the 2019 Miami FC season, which starts in just eight days. The NPSL season, Miami FC season three competitions this year, Coach. Also look back a little bit on last season where we lifted this trophy and two others during the course of the year. So um, want to hear from listeners, want to hear from Miami FC fans out there all over the world uh, here on Facebook Live. And Coach, uh, welcome back. It's been a, a, a challenging off season. Obviously, a lot of ins and outs of players. Yeah. Uh, give us a little uh, update as to where we are. Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, a busy off season uh, trying to get the trying to get the team together. But we've, you know, when when you first take over a team, you you know, when I've done it a few teams now, you uh, a few times now, you you sometimes have to be a little bit more patient and you need to try and find a way to accommodate the existing players while you bring in your own players and and basically have a slow transition into getting the team to the way you want to play and it can sometimes take a few transfer windows to be able to do that I think if I look back from my experience I maybe tried to change things too quickly when I was in Ottawa but now I come to Miami I learned from those experiences and, and we managed to play a way that suited the players last year but this year we, we've recruited um, the exact player profiles that we need to play the type of football that we want to play here and you know there's there's no excuses if these players now um, they, they are the profiles that I, that I wanted to bring in and, and it really is my stamp on the team now and, and hopefully we can we can show that come the first game of the season. So talk, let's talk a little bit about last season coach. Yeah. You come in here, uh, you're not sure what league you're going to play in, yeah. you, you inherit a set of players uh, who didn't know what league they were going to yeah. play in, uh, yet you're able to hit the ground running, you win the NPSL Sunshine yeah. Conference, you win the NPSL Southeast uh, uh, region and yeah. then you win the national championship. Yeah. How are you able to get everything settled and, and continue the legacy here. Well, you're very generous there, Karthik, saying that we got hit the ground running. I, it was a, it was a, it was a slow start. I yeah. think. I mean, we we got we got full steam ahead as as the season went on, but the, the first the first few weeks of the season weren't at the level that we wanted them to be at. Um, and we learned from that as well. And we said, right, we're going to bring the players in earlier this year to make sure that we can get through those teething problems that we had at the beginning of last year, and and make sure that we can. We can we can uh, be ready come the first game of the season, and, and I feel that last year, once we got into our groove um, and the players really understood the way we wanted to play, it was uh, it was a it's a real joy to be on the sideline when your team's playing like clockwork in yeah. in, in in the flow, and, and you can stand on the sideline and you're not having to fix things every two minutes. And and it, at times last year, it was a real pleasure to watch the guys play and and thoroughly enjoyable when your teams playing so well and, and and dominating games and just win after win after win after win. It really is it really is an enjoyable job to have. Coach, one of the aspects of that slow start you mentioned last yeah. season was getting bounced from the Open Cup early. Yeah. We learned our opposition for the first round of the Open yeah. Cup on Wednesday, which is the Florida Soccer yeah. Soldiers. Uh, what do you know about them and what's your expectations for the Open Cup this year? Um, we obviously don't know too much about them, um, but we'll find out about them before the uh, we'll do our due diligence and we'll find out everything we can about them before before we face them um, and then we'll be prepared for that game and, and take them every bit as seriously as as we take anybody else and, and um, we're hungry for the Open Cup um, we are a little bit disappointed with how things went in the Open Cup last year obviously we were we were quite comfortable in the game until we get a red card yeah. and then we you know it was unfortunate the way the way things played out, um, and you know we're hungry. That's really our chance to to pitch ourselves against the people that are playing in uh, in different leagues, and and we want to we want to show we've we've been really really successful in the Open Cup in the past. Uh, we've been really successful domestically, and we want to continue that. We we want to go as far as we can in every competition. So this is the winningest professional club in, in the United States uh, in the la over the last couple seasons. Uh, having won three trophies last year, having that culture of winning, yeah. how did that affect your recruitment this offseason? You said you brought in a lot of players that, that you want to play the style of football yeah. you'd like to implement this season. Was recruiting easier because of winning, or does that make the standards so high that it's difficult to find the right the, fix? The recruitment, um, it's easy to attract people to Miami FC 
with the way that the level that the, the club runs at, the way we, we operate. Also, the city of Miami is a great attraction to, to people. Um, the challenge this year was that um, was the the inability to get uh, work permits for international players. So, with the amount of expansion teams this year, um, and each team only being allowed a certain amount of foreign players, the player pool that we had to pick from was was uh, heavily was heavily uh, domestic. Yeah, it was well, we could only speak domestic, but it was it was you know there was a lot of people fishing in that pond. Um, so the, the the player pool of American players was stretched. So we had to make sure that we worked ridiculously hard to try and to try and source the the players that we want. And, and we're really pleased with all things considered with with the players that we managed to get. Let me ask you, uh, following up on that, there's been expansion, right? Yeah. In USL and yeah. in, in the other leagues, did that affect your ability to get players? Of course, because if you if you think about say there was um, there was there was an expansion I think there was um, four or five expansion teams in the USL Championship there was the new league the USL one um, that had six or seven teams I think so if you think there's 20 just for easy numbers 20 domestic players on each of those teams you're talking 100 players that have <laughs> yeah, been taken right. from, from at least that have been taken from the, the player pool that now you don't have to pick from um, and what that does is it drives prices up for the players in demand, um, and you, you've got to you've got to do your business quite early. And, and we, we we had foresight, and we, we knew that was coming. We knew what the situation was going to be. And as I said, we we uh, we managed to get uh, a really good group of players together. Not just not just good players, but good people. And I know people say that all the time, um, but when you've got a good locker room, and you've got to get a little bit lucky to get a good locker room. You know, you, you do all your due diligence to try and bring in good people, but when you actually get them in and you see them in the first couple of training sessions and then when things happen, you see the true character and you see, and, and what we've been really lucky with this year, and, and I don't say it cheaply, is we have a wonderful locker room, a great leadership team, and it really is a pleasure going into training to work with these guys. So before we get to some of the new guys, and I do want to talk about that because you brought in some recruit, some mm -hmm. accomplished players and some really good yeah. uh, team guys. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the guys coming back. Uh, yeah. Dylan Mares, yeah. who obviously had an outstanding season last year. He's one of the top midfielders for possibly in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, Ar Adi, Ariel Martinez, and Darius Suarez. Talk about bringing those, and Lionel Brown, those four yeah. guys back yeah. and, and the leadership they bring. Yeah, um, and Brian James. And Brian James also. Well. Yeah, uh, it's coming back from last year. So it's... Um, obviously, when we when we knew we were putting the team together again for this year, we I think it's really important that you if you have a if you have a, a way of playing that that you believe in. I think it's really important that a club has an identity. I think first and foremost, um, my job when I came to Miami FC was learn what the culture of the club is, um, and. And try and try and pay respect to the culture of the club. Try and make sure that the the identity of the club was 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 carried on from the great work that, that Alessandro Nesta did, um, and everybody here, not not just Alessandro, the coaching staff, the front office, ownership, everybody did. But then try and make it my team at the same time. Um, and what you've got to do is, if you've to do that, you've got to have. It doesn't matter how good your ideas are. If you don't have players that can implement them, and what I wanted to do in this off season was bring back the players that could play the, the high energy, high tempo type of football that I want to play, um, and then bring in other players to complement them. And, and and if you look last year, Dario was was outstanding for us. He was our joint top goal scorer, um, high energy, quick, great one v one, really good finisher, and someone that I was. Really, he had he had opportunities or an opportunity to go to another team and chose to to remain with us. So it was it was a, a real coup to be able to keep to keep Dario um, Ariel Martinez as well as as being here, not quite from day one, but but nearly yeah. from day one. And and he's a player that I love working with. He's got that uh, ability to do something different, crowd pleaser, um, and he he. He, you know, he's, he's a really important part. Dylan, obviously, I think at his age, 
is one of the best players outside of outside of MLS. Yeah. Um, and I fully expect him, you know, when the time's right, to to make that step to to play at a high level, whether it's in this country or another country, because he certainly has the talent to do so. And, and it's been, you know, he's going to be captain this year. We've given him the the responsibility of being captain, and and yeah, just to get him back has, has been great. And and Brian as well. Brian was somebody that you know with Johnny Steele last year. Um, Brian was hungry to play a little bit more but Johnny Steele was in, in such good form that we 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 gave Brian minutes and I, I was saying to him I said, I said Brian look I really believe in you as a player it's just unfortunate this moment in time that we've got uh, Johnny playing in your position um, because he's you know he's a, he, we need his leadership skills on the pitch but I believe in you and one of the first persons that people that we signed when when we, we knew we were putting the roster again together was Brian and, and the other person that we need to mention that's been here in the past is, is Baggio Baggio's back so, yeah. so Baggio in year one was uh, sorry in year was here came from trials um, year two kind of broke into the team and then got, got the injury and kind of has been out for a while and he has been absolutely fantastic in pre-season a uh, real real big prospect and another player with huge energy great mobility that, that really epitomizes the way that I want to see a team play. Let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the local culture of, of this yeah. club. You've got Dario and Adi, both Cuban-Americans, yeah. or both Cuban players, that national team players, uh, that uh, uh, obviously connect with the local community. Yeah. Tomas Granito, we bring in, he's a Miami native. Brian James is from Boca Raton. Yeah. I watched him play as a youth player. Yeah. I watched his dad play with the Fort yeah, Lauderdale yeah, Strikers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real local guy, Lionel Brown, you mentioned. Yeah. Um, uh, among others, Lionel I never met. Lionel deserves a mention as well yeah. because that you have people in your locker room that the glue that keeps everyone together, and he's definitely one of them. Um, he's he's a brilliant person and a huge part of the locker room. And Brian uh, Lionel might not have played as much over the last few years, but it doesn't mean that he isn't a massive part of this club. And and he's actually one of the the senior leaders in the locker room. So to have him back as well was is a really pleasing for me so lo local guys yeah. like uh, like james uh, like granito uh, mm. what does that mean also for the fans and for for the dressing room i think that i've always i've always said that no matter where i've been that if it's a choice between a local player and somebody from from you know from outside if it's a 50 50 decision i'll always pick the local player um but the local player has have to be good enough yeah. to, to deserve the space and, and we're lucky here because we've got such a we've got such an abundance of talent in in south florida but, you know, without going too deep into it, it it's maybe not been the most efficient place to develop players with all the politics here right. that, that, that you face but um there is an abundance of talent here and we're quite lucky that we can get local players into our team and one of the things that I think is important as a, as a football club is to show pathways. Um, we show that if you're good enough, we are the only professional team, fully professional operating team in Miami at, at this moment in time. So if you're good enough, we are the pinnacle of football in, in Miami. Um, so it shows that if you're good enough, we can give the opportunity to play in front of your friends and family. And what that does, not just for... Not just for um, the players playing and the friends and family. If you're a 13, 14, 15 year old, you know, eight, nine, 10, whatever fo pl football player, and you're, you're playing and you're playing like, like to Western or, or, or Pinecrest or, or clubs like this, um, you can see somebody that played in the same teams as you now playing at a professional level. And that gives you hope. You know, one of the most important things for me as a, as a young player was going to a game and watching professionals play and then going back to the playground and trying to emulate those players. And what we do with live football, and the, the only professional live football in Miami, is we give young, play, young players the opportunity to come out, watch the professionals play, go back to the clubs, go back to, to the schools and, and emulate them. And I think it's really important as if those players kind of walk the same path that these, that these young players are coming to the game have walked. Before we're done today, Coach, I want to talk a little bit about the Miami FC Academy and mm -hmm. that initiative as well yeah. as uh, talk a little bit about the players for, for this season. Yeah. But we've got some questions, some interaction from uh, our fans out there. Darren via Twitter asks, Coach, who has been the biggest surprise in training camp thus far this year? Um, 
biggest surprise. And do you know it'd be hard to single out. I don't want to give you a, you know, a stock answer. <laughs> um, right. But it'd be very difficult to to single out any individual. I, I think it's more the the collective ability of the team in general. Um, I spoke to the players today, and I don't mind sharing this with you. And, and I said to them today, I said, guys, I said, I've, I've never really been in this position before. I don't really know what our best eleven is going into the opening game of the season. I don't. Is that I, a, is that a good problem or a bad problem? It, it's a good problem because it means you can't really get it wrong. So so um, it, it's a problem because there's going to be people left out come the first game of the season that deserve to play, um, and it'll just it'll come down to uh, who I think is the right profile to to win in, to win on the day, and the next week. It might be a different profile that I think is is, is the right uh, collection of players to win on the day, but it's more the collectiveness of the players, the the togetherness of the players to to kind of buy into the ideas that we're trying to teach them, and what they have then translated into performance on the pitch. It's more that I'm more surprised with the collective ability of the team than than any individual. It's hard to single out an individual. Uh, Fernando via Facebook Messenger asks us who will replace Daniel Vega as the goalkeeper obviously uh, Miami FC's uh, all-time leading shot stopper yeah. uh, all everything Daniel Vega has moved on to Major League Soccer yeah. um, so who, who's going to replace him between what, the pipes? Anybody would miss a player of the level of, yeah. of, of Daniel Vega um, I mean the, what, what you don't do is you, you don't try and replace Daniel Vega I think that's a mistake that you can make um, you try and replace Daniel Vega one for one, then it, it, it's very, very difficult. Um, what you might have to do is you might have to replace Daniel Vega with the two centre backs and the goalkeeper to make sure that they're compatible um, rather than try and replace Vega one for one. We were lucky to have Daniel Vega at Miami FC and we know that. We love Daniel Vega here. He's always going to be a very popular figure here and, and somebody that's welcome here anytime that he wants to walk by the office or come out to training ground he's a you know he's really truly one of the icons uh, of this club but we've got to move on uh, we've got to move on and we've got to we've got to put our faith in 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 Mark Pace and, and Lionel Brown but but as I said it, it's it would have been hard to replace Daniel one for one what we've got to do is try and okay if this goalkeeper that we're bringing in has different attributes then can we get two central defenders that complement his attributes? And I feel that we've done a great job of that. Let's talk a little bit about those new players. Uh, you mentioned Mark Pace. We also yeah. got, we've also got uh, Lance Roseboom, who you've yeah. worked with a yeah. couple times previously yeah. in Ottawa and in Austin, as well as Miguel Gonzalez and other really high profile, uh, good pedigree yeah. players. So yeah. talk a little bit about both. Yeah, of Mark's, Mark's a, a totally different goalkeeper to, to, to Vega. So it, that's why I'm saying you can't compare them, you can't replace them. Uh, he's, he's more of a, an American traditional type goalkeeper, really good hands, good presence, makes really good saves. Um, maybe Vega had a little bit more flair, you know, a little bit more in, in the way he played. Sweeper um, keeper type. Yeah, yeah, whereas Mark's more, a, more a, a traditional goalkeeper, would I say. But what you've got to do is you've got to recognise that and you go, okay, this is this is a really good goalkeeper. Mark's a really good goalkeeper. It, um, but what we've then got to do is, okay, if that's the way he's played, don't try and ask him to be Daniel Vega. Ask him to be Mark Pace and then we find the centre-backs that complement him. And, and I feel that's what we've done. But it's going to be... It, it, the fans are going to enjoy watching Mark play just like uh, we enjoyed watching Lionel play when he came on <laughs> as an outfield player against yeah. Miami United in the first game of the season last yeah. season. Now Lionel, Lionel, as I said, that he's gonna, those two are gonna fight it out, uh, and they've they've both done really well in pre-season. So we'll make that decision come game time. You've signed a, a real diverse roster of players, and play, some players are familiar yeah. with other guys who've got a lot of pedigree uh, historically in USL and other leagues. Uh, uh, tell us about constructing this roster. You, yeah. Obviously, you, you talked about style. Was there yeah. anything else you were looking for? Well, obviously, you mentioned Lance earlier, and I, I spoke about Lionel, but Lance is someone I've worked with before, and and he basically epitomizes everything that I think that it means to 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 be a good teammate, to be a good player, to to coach. I mean, he's he's the guy that. Uh, there's not going to be anybody that, that outworks him. I'm not going to say he works harder than everybody else, but 
he's not going to be outworked. Um, he's, you know, the guy that's at the end of practice that's helping the equipment manager pick up all the balls. Um, he's just a, I've never really heard him be too critical of everyone, anyone. He's just a, a he makes your locker room better, uh, much like Lionel, just makes your locker room better. And, and this is the culture we want here. We don't, it's not enough to be a good footballer to play for Miami FC. You've got to be a good person and you've got to be good in the community. Um, and, and Lance, it's easy for me to coach Lance because we've got such a, a history together that he knows exactly what I want. And, and it gets to the stage where I just have to look at him and he, he knows what I'm going to say before I've even said it. And he, I've got it, coach. You know, and, and it, it's uh, players like Lance make your job easier um, because you don't need to start from scratch to get them on, on to get them doing what exactly what you need them to do so uh, he'll be it's great to, to bring him in but what we've also got is if you think about Dylan's coming back knows exactly the way we want to work Ariel's coming back Dario's coming back um, and then you know we've brought in in players that I've seen in, in the USL and, and in other leagues that I've gone I think they're my type of player uh, obviously Baggio coming back in has hit the ground running um, you know, the, the players that we found at open tryouts, Callum Chapman Page and, and uh, Hector Morales have been hugely uh, successful in pre season. And yeah, it's, it's just, you know, we, we, got, we got lucky uh, <laughs> with those two players and we, we got lucky with a lot of players because sometimes when you bring in so many new players, you think, you expect to get a few wrong. You know, you expect to go, oh, that player was not quite what we thought he was going to be. And sometimes you get a nice little surprise. Well, we, we, we've got a, a nice little surprise with almost everybody that we've brought in. Is uh, starting camp as early as we started yeah. it this year? We've been in camp now two months or yeah. so. Uh, did that help with all the new guys? Was that something you needed to do? It also helped the coaching staff because obviously Nelson came back from last year, but we've got uh, Paul Crichton that's come in who is you know, goalkeeper coach and assistant coach. We've brought in Anthony who is strength and conditioning, new new trainer, new equipment manager. <laughs> so what, what it did as well was it, it gave us the chance to all get to the coaching staff to know how we all worked. Because as much as as much as the players need to be on the same page, the coaching staff are a team too. And and we had to make sure that it, it, there was a lot of trial and error and a lot of conversations where we had to be honest and frank with each other saying, look, I know this is a good idea, but this is what we need to make this work. And what we've got now is the long pre-season gave us a chance to do that when there was no points at stake. And now we've got to a stage where the team knows exactly what they want to do, the coaching team knows exactly what they want to do, and, and it, it has been, you know, looking back, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but it, it's been a really important thing that we did was start now. So we're moving this season to Buccaneer Field mm. at Barry University, a different fan experience. And yeah. A more traditional soccer yeah. stadium than what we uh, what we had last season at St. Thomas. I've got a question from Facebook Live. Uh, Jose saying, "What does the day brigade mean to you and the players that the supporters group?" Are? Um, football's about fans. You know, it's not about owners. It's not about players. It's not about um, it's not about uh, coaches. The you know, I'm a fan first and foremost. You know, my happiest memories in football is to is growing up going to watch Liverpool play, you know, in all different parts of the world. And the only reason we get to do what we want and get paid well is because fans come to the game. You know, I, I, I know owners, especially in this country, um, we've got the best one, in, in my opinion. Um, have to put the hands deep in the pockets to allow us to do it because unfortunately the way football is in this country, it, it's not really a profitable business without the TV revenue and, and the sponsorship money being in it um, but if there's no fans in football it's nothing and they brigade the, 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 the loyalty that they've showed to Miami FC in, in a time when they could have turned the back on us with what we've gone through in the last couple of years is you know it, it gives you an extra motivation to do well for them because we know how much football means to them and how supportive they've gone and, and what 
another thing that I say to the players is all the time is play football how you would play if you were a fan how, how play football how a fan would play if they were in your position because it's a privilege to be a footballer and I always think that look, it, it's not it, when you know it's a privilege you can't take it for granted and they have a responsibility the players I have a responsibility to the coach to to make sure that we play a type of football that they would want to play if they were if they had the the privilege of, of being in that position so coach before we talk a little bit about the NPSL Founders Cup it's something very, everyone here is real excited yeah. about yeah. I think people all over yeah. the country are excited about that competition that uh, we'll be in starting yeah. in August let's talk about the academy we, we yeah. I mentioned youth players earlier. We mentioned local guys, Brian James, Tomas yeah. Granito, others that are South Florida youth. Yeah. Uh, you and, and Sean Flynn, our, our CEO, and and, um, and some of the players were uh, at an event in December where we launched yeah. the Miami FC Academy yeah. uh, out at, uh, at uh, Tamiami Park. Uh, talk to us about uh, youth development and South Florida in particular and, and what we hope to do with this academy. Um. I think the most important thing about the academy is it shows the long-term commitment from Ricardo Silva. Um, although we've been through turbulent waters in the last couple of years, the the uh, the acquiring the academy has showed that this isn't a hobby for Ricardo. This is a long-term plan where he wants to give back to the community in Miami and be part of a long-term project. I mean, I've been. I've been, you know, when I came here, it's been made very, very clear this is a long, long term project. This isn't just, um, you know, something that Ricardo wants to do for a couple of years. He wants to be here for the foreseeable future. And the academy gives us the opportunity to show that, first and foremost. Then you've, when you go into, I think that's the most important thing about the academy. It gives everybody in the organization, it gives the fan base, it gives the fan base comfort that. You know, regardless of what's happened in the last two years, we're here to stay, and we're going to do everything we can to make this a long-term project. On the technical side, I don't think there's anything better as a fan of an organisation than to be developed by your hometown, home to, home, hometown team, and then to go on and play in that first team. Um, and what we want to do is we understand that when you launch an academy there's all different levels of an academy and maybe only not even one percent of the players that come through the academy are ever going to have that privilege so what you've got to do is when you've got an academy is you've got to we don't want to with the academy we don't want to um, only cater for the elite player that less than one percent because why should you be why should you be um, punished when you love soccer and you want to get better at soccer and, and you just because you aren't going to be a professional so we want to provide opportunities yes we want to the ultimate dream is to provide uh, is to produce a player for the the first team but realistically the more important role that we have is to help all soccer play all, all youth soccer players that want to play soccer in Miami become better and have an enjoyable process and that's what we're going to be committed to do it's something that I have I'm very passionate about I've got a background in it as, as one of the technical directors at, at, um, at Lone Star which is a huge uh, youth program in Austin and I've seen how much impact that soccer can have on on people's lives even if they don't want to play professional and that's the kind of impact look we're, we're, we've only put the first spade in the ground really um, we've got a lot of work to do to to fulfill our goals with the academy but everyone's going to be working tirelessly to make it happen so we've got a new neighbor in town uh, many fans have been asking yeah. us about uh, the new team david beckham's mls team into miami uh, which will kick yeah. off up the road in fort lauderdale yeah next season 2020 uh, do you foresee having a, a good crosstown rivalry with uh, that club the best I mean, if, if you think about the, the best rivalries in, in football, it's normally, if you think about the biggest clubs in the world, the most, um, you know, I think if you look in England, you've got Manchester United and you've got Manchester City in the same city. And that creates passion 
right? It creates passion for you to, 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 to represent your team in your city. Because there is a threat of another team, it gives you that passion to, to be a fan and to defend the right of your, of your badge. Liverpool and Everton. Um, and if you want to go, you know, I think it's, but then Liverpool and Manchester United have that rivalry yeah. as well. You know, you, you look at it and you go to London, there's five or six teams in London. Well, Liverpool and Manchester are only 30 miles yeah, apart. That 30 miles, yeah. Other. And then you, you can go through, even in Spain's a little bit differently, although you have multiple teams in, in Madrid, Atletico and, and Real Madrid really don't like each other. Yeah. You know, you've got, you've got two teams in Barcelona, but then you have the rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid as well. Um, and when you go through world football, you've got the two teams in, in Italy and Milan, you've got two teams in Rome. It's football. Yeah. Football exists. And, and it, we've got to remember that it's a game, right? And it is, it is about rivalries and it is about, it is about passion and, and it's about seeing your team, even if, even if you've got Goliath coming into town and we're David, it is about competing with them. However, what I also want to say is that's only on the field. Off the field, we're partners. You know, yeah. off the field, I'm not saying that we're going to have a partnership with them, but we both have the same goals, which is to grow the game of soccer in Miami. Um, we don't have, we are delighted they're coming in. Uh, we spent a whole load of money in, in Miami to grow the game here. Uh, if you think about the investment that, that, that Miami FC have made, uh, at Ricardo Silva Stadium, uh, the investment that, with the academy, the investment uh, at, at St. Thomas, upgrading the facility at St. Thomas uh, as the training complex, um, the amount of money that's been spent to bring top level players to Miami for, for, my, for Miami fans to see. Um, we've invested a, a lot of money into the game. And if somebody else is going to come to town and help us move soccer along in this city which deserves top level soccer and it deserves a local rivalry then it can only be good for us we may be rivals if we get to play them in the open cup but unofficially we're partners with the same intentions and same goals off the field yeah if we get to play them in the open cup uh, they'll hope they have better luck than the other mls yeah. teams that we faced uh yeah. this club's never lost to an mls team yeah which is uh something we're very proud of here yeah. at Miami FC. Yeah. Uh, speaking, no pressure <laughs> no pressure exactly uh speaking of uh those fields of uh, uh, the the owner of inter miami made some comments a few weeks ago about the condition of pitches and the condition of fields here in miami mm -hmm. um in part of his justification for for relocating his team at least temporarily to fort lauderdale and their training ground and, and uh, youth uh, setup will be in Fort Lauderdale. Um, what's been your experience with, with the fields, Ricardo Silva Stadium, St. Thomas, Barry, some of the other ones we've talked about? Um, um, you can, yeah, unless you're playing, you know, unless you're playing at Augusta on the, <laughs> on the third fairway, then you're going to complain about the grass, aren't you? Um, and if it's not real and it's artificial, everyone's going to find a way to complain. I mean, look, um, pitches can always be better. But, but my thing is, you've got to, you've got to, I'm a believer that you make the most out of the environment that you have. Um, and, you know, we've got, to, we've got to make the most of the pitches. But look, Miami is, uh, as we're finding out, or we found out over the years, um, and into Miami from the outside looking in, seem to be finding out, is a difficult city to, yeah. to get things done in. And, you know, yes, in an ideal world, we would love some great soccer fields that we could all use and, and stadiums and... But it, when I drive around, there's not many sites that are glaringly obvious that you can do that on. Right, there's um, not much so, land. So the only... I think there is enough soccer fields um, just when you drive around. Maybe we, we'd always want more, but there is quite a lot of soccer fields when you drive around. You know, and if we, if the city want to, the, the thing is that most of the soccer fields are city owned. So if people complain about, um, if people aren't happy with the quality of the fields and it's providing funds for the city to be able to maintain them to the level that they want the fields to be to. So let's talk about something our fans are excited about and people around the country are excited about it. NPSL Founders Cup. 
Uh, obviously, we have this NPSL Sunshine Conference season, yeah. which kicks off next week against Miami United and, and it runs through July. Beginning in August, NPSL Founders Cup with the New York Cosmos, yeah. with Detroit City, Chattanooga FC, some of the biggest clubs outside of Major League Soccer in this country. Um, you've constructed a roster that's built for uh, this for these two competitions, Sunshine Conference and U.S. Open Cup that we talked about, but also that will take you through to the Founders Cup. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we've got a small roster. Um, but we, we've, we're really pleased with the quality. We, I'm not saying that we won't look at making some additions for the Founders Cup. Um, in fact, I'm pretty certain that, that we'll do that. But what we wanted to do was get the, the core of players together for, for, this, for this NPSL season and for the Open Cup. Um, and that's what, that's what we're going to do. Just on the, just on the Founders Cup. It was really, really cool to see. I saw something online. Chattanooga and Detroit playing a preseason yeah, friendly. Last week. a huge turnout. I mean, they had more people to their game. They outdo so. the USL game in town. That, that's, pretty cool. yeah, yeah, uh, really that's pretty cool. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. And the, the other thing as well, I've been, I've been involved in MLS games uh, in preseason. And sometimes we didn't have that many people. It's changed a little bit in, in recent years where you've got some really good crowds for, for some MLS preseason games, but you still get the ones where there's not too many there. So, you know, hats off to, to both the communities uh, because it, it, to, to be able to put together a, uh, an event like that. I, I'm not uh, trying to, to uh, I don't want this to be misinterpreted, put down the N NPSL Sunshine Conference, but obviously you're going to go from a, a, a certain level of competition in that mm. conference to this level of competition, yeah. the Founders Cup. How how do you handle that quick turnaround? See, I, I, Much tougher competition. I, I I think it will be tougher, but um, the 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 level of the conference last year with Jacksonville, Miami United, full disclosure, took me a little bit by surprise. I, I must admit, I, I didn't expect the the level to be what it was. Um, I've I've I went to watch Miami United in their, their game in, in pre-season against the, the team from Honduras and how do I say Monta Montague 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 yeah so your pronunciation is much better than mine <laughs> I'm not sure mine is right I didn't want to get it right well listen it's you that said it not me so I don't care if yours is right or not but um, they're good again yeah you know they're a good team and I'm certainly not underestimating the the level of competition in 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 this in this Sunshine Conference, you know, I've, I've, I'm once bitten, twice shy, and I'd, I certainly won't be making the same mistake that I made last year. And Jacksonville are going to be a little bit of an unknown, uh, as as such as a few of the other teams are. But Miami United are no secret, and the 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 they're certainly somebody who we're taking very, very, very seriously. Yeah, this uh, conference I think still remains pretty strong. Uh, Jacksonville mm -hmm. released a roster today. Yeah. A lot of names I'm familiar with from from colleges in yeah. Florida. Good good players. Uh, speaking of Miami United, the rivalry is intense. We saw last season what happened. They knocked us out of Open Cup. Uh, they had a very good team last season. The core of that team returns. Um, how do you get your team dialed up for playing your big rival in the very first competitive match? That's the, the easy one. That's I easy. think I think it's more about keeping them, keeping them, uh, keeping them calm. You know, <laughs> we're we're certainly under no. You know, we the first two games of the season drawing twice. Uh, I think they probably, if I'm honest, deserve to win the first game uh, at, at their place. I thought we we scored in the last minute to, yeah. to get the tie. I think we deserve to beat them at our place. And then it was a wild game, though. Uh, the red card, red cards, and and it was a it was a wild game. But I, I do think we did enough to win that game. The you know the third game we played against them. I, I was so comfortable um, until the red card just before half time and, and then obviously they took the chances and deserved to win um, so even from a selfish point of view I'm, that's a record I don't like uh, and I want to put that right I want to make sure that our day brigade and, and, and the rest not just day brigade but all our fan base get the chance to, to see us win a game against our local rivals as you go into um, the Founders Cup, they're one of the teams in the Founders yeah. Cup. So I mean, obviously, they're play, they're going to play at the same high level. Yeah. Uh, you have the Cosmos coming. Yeah. We haven't played the Cosmos since 2017. Uh, 
infamous match for those of us here in South Florida um, where they uh, they eliminated Miami FC on penalty kicks and, and uh, there's been a history between the Cosmos and teams from South Florida yeah. whether it be Miami FC the Fort Lauderdale Strikers uh, going back to the old NASL that, that version mm-hmm. of the Fort Lauderdale Strikers um, that match will be at Ricardo Silva Stadium yeah. uh, talk a little bit about that because they are even growing up uh, in the UK as you did they are a big name in world football Cosmos yeah 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 um they, they are you know it's you know i think 13 letters you know which is a lot of letters yeah to make the name uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, no it's it look they're, they're a big name they're if you if you if you read off their list of five best players it's comparable with anybody any team probably anywhere else in the world yeah. you know when, when, when you've got Pele and Beckenbauer as two of your former players it's <laughs> you know when you're reading off the best players from Real Madrid or the best players from Liverpool or Manchester United you're reading off the five best players the Cosmos can compete with anybody when you read off those names so um, the crowds that they drew back in the day it, they really did put um, they really did put one of the reasons that football came on the map uh, yeah. back then and you know, obviously it's a different cosmos now to what it was but the name still remains and and you know they they still try to uphold the traditions of of the past and and yeah it's a it's a great challenge going up against a, a, a team with the history that they have goals for this season we've got this behind us this is Last year's national championship what? trophy. Swimming, we're going swimming. <laughs> We've got the water behind us. It's Miami, folks. Um, going on but, a jet ski. Me and you, Carter. Come on out. Are you? Am I in the front or the back? You're in the front. <laughs> So we've got five trophies we've won in the last two years yeah. here at Miami FC, and we uh, we are in three competitions as I mentioned, and and, and who knows what what uh, awaits in those competitions. What are the realistic goals for this season with so many new players coming in and coming out? Is it always to try and win the trophy that's in front of you? It's always the intention to win here. Um, you know, I think that as you said, five trophies in in three years, you can only win what's put in front of you, um, and we've managed to do that for the level that we play at better than anybody else um, and so when we go into to these games I'm, I'm you know when you coach at a, a club like Miami that expectation has to be put into the players from day one you know you, you come here to win uh, and that's what we're going to be aiming to do I mean we we will be trying to win the Sunshine Conference we'll be trying to win uh, you know all three trophies again this year and you know look, I'm not saying we're going to win the Open Cup that is a long long shot yeah. especially look in the future when you know we, we get ourselves um, hopefully back up to the you know Miami FC back to the level it deserves to be at um, the where we were in the end in, in the NESL then yeah, maybe that isn't too much of a distant dream um, by this moment in time, our, our objective is to try and go as far as we can, um, and that's what we're going to try and do: is is try and go as far as we can in the Open Cup. And and look, it, it's realistic for us to have a run and to to try and compete for all three trophies again um, uh, in the in the NPSL. When new players come into this side, do you or or Dylan or, or Adi, one of the returning players? Uh, Baggio now being back, yeah. uh, being part of that legacy, uh, take them under your arms and say, this, is, this, this club is about winning. Or is, is the, that part of the attraction the, as to the, why they've signed here? The, the players are told every day. I mean, you, the, the one thing is, what, what, I've tried to, what I've tried to do since I came here is, is, look, the most important thing is Miami FC. It, it's the most important thing. Miami FC was here before I got here. It was before, before Dylan got here. Uh, and it'll be here after us. So the most important thing for me is to, to make people understand that look, it doesn't, it's not what you feel is important, it's what you need to do that's important to Miami FC. And when you, when you have a team culture like that, which is based upon winning, um, then it gives you a much clearer defined role, what you need to do to perform. and. The one thing that, that we know here, look, if it's not personal. Um, if you're the best person to 
if I'm the best coach to to deliver that for, for Miami FC, then I'll stay in the job. If I all of a sudden become not the best coach to deliver this for Miami FC, then they'll bring in a guy who can do that. And it's the same with players. There's a pressure here to to perform. Uh, there's an expectation to win. And, and everybody in the club is fully aware of that. So our final question is from Josh uh, via email about streaming. Yes, we will be streaming all of our home games this season, and we anticipate the opposition in the Sunshine Conference will probably stream their games, or almost certainly will stream their games, let's hope. So uh, you'll be able to see every Miami FC game. Our first broadcast on the Miami FC Broadcast Network will be tomorrow night. We're playing a preseason game against FC Miami City uh, of USL League Two. Uh, that match starts at 7 p.m. at St. Thomas University. Uh, at our training facility. Keep that quiet, Kartik. I don't want people coming to watch, spying on us. <laughs> yeah. it, it is, head, it is free we've, that, that we've not put that on social media. We've not done everything, and you've just told everyone. <laughs> so 7 p.m. tomorrow at St. Thomas, a uh, coach. Some final. By the way, by the way, now I'm finished. now you're playing in goal, Kartik. <laughs> I just drafted myself. Yeah. Achilles, you're up front. You're definitely up. <laughs> Carter, you just make me play a different team. You know? <laughs> so 7 p.m. tomorrow. It's closed night. doors. It's closed doors. It's closed. No. Free. It, it, yeah, it, it's free. It's it free, will yeah. be free for our fans, and uh, it'll be our first broadcast of the season, and then we will be broadcasting every subsequent home game on the Miami FC Broadcast Network. I want to welcome our friends from yeah. Magic City yeah. Soccer, yeah. who will be jo uh, joining us with the broadcast yeah. this season. Come uh, see the new Daniel Vega. Yeah. <laughs> 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 might be you, coach. You might be oh, no. I'm more Buffon. Yeah. Not Buffon. What was the other one called the play for Manu? Bartes. Well, well, that's me. Bartes yeah, yeah, that's the, me. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe we could I could Nelson referee as well. I could be yeah. Kalina. We could put Nelson. Like Kalina? Oh, yeah, yeah. I could be both of them. I could referee and be in goal at the same time. Kalina. So any final words for our fans, coach? I thought you said you were going to do one little chat about youth soccer. Is that what you Is that what you said? Well, I would love to do a chat about youth soccer. Maybe that's yeah. a, another... Yeah. You want, yeah. want to uh, chat now? I've got... Listen, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, you just asked what have I got for the fact listen I'm my thing is and look I'm a realist okay genuinely from from me and the players and I, and I genuinely mean this we haven't been this hasn't been the easiest couple of years to to be fans of Miami uh, Miami United <laughs> this, this is a Miami FC right this hasn't been the, the easiest few years to be to be to be fans of Miami FC um, from everybody, not just me, from the coaching staff, from the players, from everybody in the club, um, thank you genuinely for, for sticking with us because it, it hasn't been easy. It's not been easy for... What, what, what people maybe not understand is the, all the changes that have happened, how that affects people at work in the office, people at work, you know, whose, whose, whose jobs, their lives, are, uh, you know, supporting the families are dependent on it. And it's been tough. Um, and... What we want to do is genuinely, from me, from the everybody in the front office, from fans, from you know, to the fans, from from everybody. Thank you for sticking with us, and that loyalty we will repay you for. Um, we we promise you we will give you everything uh, to repay you for sticking with us. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Coach, and we're going to leave it there. We're going to uh, table the youth soccer conversation until next yeah. time. But re reminder tomorrow. Uh, at St. Thomas University, 7 o'clock, free friendly against FC Miami City of USL League Two. The opening match of the NPSL Sunshine Conference season the following week, April 20th, uh, at, uh, at Buccaneer Field, Barry University against Miami United, the rivals. Uh, again, uh, played three times uh, last year. We'll play at least twice, uh, probably at least four times this season, mm -hmm. including the Founders Cup. So big rivalry, and we're looking forward to that. So uh, thank you, Coach. Are they, are they in the Open Cup this year? Uh, they are not in the Open Cup. So there we go. So it can only be four times. Yeah. <laughs> no, not good. We are. Yeah. It's nice, that. Isn't that it? is nice. Yeah. Well, we might play them in the playoffs. Are you going to get conference. credentials for that, Carter? You think you'll get credentials for that, for the Open Cup game? <laughs> 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 Thank you much, everyone. Thank you.